This atmosphere is electric, is it not? Come on, God is doing something really, really special. I mean, I cannot be more excited. You know, um, we had a freedom conference this past weekend, so if you notice all the red shirts around, uh, they're, they're hyped, they're amped up about what God is doing, what God has done, He's going to continue to do. You know, I, um, I was here Friday night and I spoke and uh, the Lord gave me a Isaiah, um, let me get to it real quick, Isaiah uh, 43, 19, and it says this, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you all recognize it? He's already begun. It's already happening. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Some of you have been walking in dry rivers, and the Lord is going to send a river of his spirit to wash over you. And he's going to change people's lives and their hearts. But I want to let you know something, though. This is not possible without our pastor and Mary Jo. Everything, listen, yeah, everything that God does is from their prayers, from their tears, from what they've sowed. And we just want to say we love you. We thank you. Can you just honor them right now? Come on, honor them, church. Come on. Hey, stand your feet. Stand your feet. Come on, honor them. Honor them. We love you all. It is all Jesus, she said. And that really has been their heart. They've been praying for revival and believing for it. And I believe we really are on the brink of a move of God. We're on the brink of a move of God. Um, I asked on Facebook some of the uh, testimonies that have happened this past weekend. We have a value around here called celebration. We want to testify God's goodness. And how we articulate that is if you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. We want to take time, so we're taking time right now. We want to take time to celebrate the wins of what God has done. Let me read a couple of these to you. Now, let me say this first. In Revelation, it says that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. In other words, when, when God does something in someone's life, you can partner with the story and see God do it again. Well, I'm on my home page. Let me get to it real quick. Here we go. God broke off all soul ties. Soul ties are deep relationships that someone's had. And it's a connection to that person that is a negative effect in their life. So God broke off all soul ties, made me so much lighter. I was carrying around weight that I never knew, but now I'm set free, only connected to the Lord, not carrying no one else's baggage. Can you say, God, do it again? Hey, say, do it again. Breaking off soul ties, showing mercy and asking for forgiveness over those that have hurt me in the past that I didn't realize was still affecting me. And asking for forgiveness over myself. And I receive my full prayer language to God be the glory. Say, God, do it again. Yes. Uh, broke off a major spirit of rejection. And learn uh, to see myself as God sees me for the first time in my 39 years. Amen. Say, God, do it again. I was delivered of anger and fear, and life was spoken over me by so many people. I'm renewed, refilled, and in awe of how God moves. Say, God, do it again. All right, one more. Let me find it. Here, here it is. On Friday night, I shared with some of the men from the group that I was on my third day without my prescription for fibro fibromyosis. I'm not saying it right. Uh, myalgia. There we go. And I needed to schedule an appointment with my doctor that night. During the first time of prayer, uh, someone came forward, was praying for me. When he mentioned the word healing, I felt an electric shock from the head to the toe. 
With heat coming down my body, right after that, I was able to walk and worship God during the whole event. All glory to God. Come on, say, God, do it again. Come on, say, God, do it again. We thank you, Lord. Man, let me say something. When we come in here with an expectancy to meet with Jesus, it is easy in his presence to see healing, deliverance, people made free. Things in his presence is easy. That's why we, we are a community of people that is life around the presence of God because what's in the Bible can actually happen today because he's the same God today as he was yesterday and he will be forever. But it's our job to come expecting to see him do it again and be in his presence because in his presence is easy. You understand it's easy in his presence. Say it's easy. It's easy in his presence. Hey, this morning we are talking uh, about uh, we're, we're continuing our series, In My Feelings, and uh, we're talking about freedom in the area of emotional health. And what I want to talk about this morning is in the area of feeling heavy, a feeling of being heavy, an emotion of being heavy. What well, the Bible says, they call it a spirit of heaviness. An extreme level of this would be depression. Maybe in your life you're experiencing heaviness or depression because of a habitual sin in your life. Maybe it's pornography, maybe it's lying, maybe it's gossip, any number of things in your life. Maybe it's an addiction. Or maybe you're experiencing this feeling because of a loss of a job or a loss of a loved one. But you're having this feeling of heaviness and you just can't shake it. Well, there is something as believers that God has given us to combat this feeling. And the Lord wants to set you free from the feeling of heaviness, the feeling of depression, and is found in Isaiah chapter 61. Let's read this together. I want to read the whole thing for context, and then we're going to concentrate on one part of this. It says this, The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I've entitled my message this morning, Praise is a Weapon. Can you say praise is a weapon? It's a weapon. It's a weapon that we can use. If you like my notes, you can text notes to the number that's on the screen right now. Uh, Let's pray. And let's just invite the Holy Spirit just to speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, we are all here for you. No one came here to hear me. Lord, we haven't come here to hear a song or just to go through the motions and make a religious checkbox. But Lord, we came here to meet with you, Jesus. We came here to gather around your presence. And so, Lord, we pray this morning, God, that you would speak. You would speak to our hearts, God, because your servants are listening, Jesus. God, I pray you would take this Logos word and make it rhema to us this morning, God. That, Lord, it would become alive, Jesus, in our hearts. And so, Lord, we surrender to you and we give it all to you and all for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Isaiah 61, 3. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You are literally exchanging the spirit of heaviness for praise. And it's a choice that you make. You see, heaviness, depression, it disconnects you from God, but praise, it connects you to God. Let's talk about the spirit of heaviness, and then we're going to talk about putting on the garment of praise. The spirit of heaviness can be characterized like this, as any intense negative feeling that challenges our faith and what we know about God. I'm going to read it again. 
is characterized by any intense negative feeling that challenges our faith in what we know about God. To feel heavy is to be burdened. An important question for any believer is this. Are you going to cling to the emotion that you're feeling of heaviness? Or are you going to cling to what you know about God and declare his goodness? What do we know about God? He's good. He's your strong tower. He's your very present help in time of need. What do we know about God? His grace is sufficient for you. He is for you, not against you. He is with you every step of the way. He is your God. He is your ever-present help in time of need. In the moment of heaviness, we can make the choice, say it's a choice, to remind ourselves who God is and put on the garment of praise. What does that mean to put on the garment of praise? It's to choose worship despite how you may feel emotionally. I'm going to choose to worship God despite how I might feel right now. I might be feeling heavy. I might be feeling like, man, everything is against me. But I'm going to choose right now in this moment to put on the garment of praise. Just like you put on a shirt. Just like you put on your pants. You're putting on the garment of praise. One of the greatest examples I can think of in Scripture uh, is the example in Acts chapter 16. And we look at the story of Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, they were thrown into prison. They were shackled. They were put chains around them. They were beaten. They were in this terrible situation. And they were going through this terrible time. But look what happens to them. Look at their response to the situation. Acts 16 verse 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Listen, it wasn't some timid praise, was it? If the prisoners could hear them, They weren't just worshiping on the inside. They were were outwardly expressing their love to God. Despite their current situation, they chose to worship the Lord. And in spite your current situation or what you might be going through right now, you have to choose to put on the garment of praise for heaviness. Now watch what happens when you put on the garment of praise and you exchange heaviness for the garment of praise. Verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Look at that picture of praise as they begin to worship God. Their chains broke. But not only did their chains broke, but everyone that could hear the praise and the glory of God began to break in that prison. And the very foundation of that prison began to shake. Listen, church, if we begin to choose to worship God, as we make this a place where he dwells and he inhabits, what happens is people from all outside who are going through heaviness, who who walk in these doors with just this, this depression, and they walk through these doors dealing with all these issues. Listen, your praise breaks the chains of the people around you. It is so incredible to think that when you walk into the room, you're in a carrier of the presence of God, and in carrying the presence of God, it breaks others' chains. How amazing is our God? Do you see the weapon that God has given us? It's a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Come on, say praise is a weapon. When you put on the garment of praise, it is the antidote for depression and heaviness. So what exactly is praise? Let's talk about praise now. What I want to do this morning is I want to give you seven different Hebrew words for praise. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh my goodness, Hebrew words. I don't know if I want to go through every single point, uh, seven points about Hebrew words. Listen, the, the important thing is the concept, not, uh, not the Hebrew word itself. But some of you might be challenged this morning to go and to, and to look at each and every word. But, the, but to understand praise, because the Bible says that we're to worship God in spirit and in truth, we want to understand what praise is. How many of you want to understand what praise is, what it really is? Yeah. So let's look at these Hebrew words. I want to start off uh, in Psalm 145. Uh, I want to say this real quick. If you want to text praise uh, to the number, they're going to put it on the screen right now real quick. You can actually get these references um, for for praise. So I don't know if you have that. It's 904-503-6772. There it is. If you want to text praise, you can get these references. Let's read Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God, O King. And I will bless your name forever and ever. 
Every day I will bless you and I will praise. So that word praise is a different Hebrew word. Your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. A separate Hebrew word for praise. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise, another Hebrew word for praise, your mighty acts to another and shall declare your mighty acts. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. So let's look at these words. The words are weapons. These words are weapons. Praise is a weapon. Number one is a Hebrew word, yada. Yada. Yada means this, to lift up hands, confess, or declare the attributes of God. It's an attitude of love towards God. Psalm 145, 2 says this, And I will praise, or I will lift up my hands, and I will thank God, your name forever and ever. So the first time that you see this word used in Scripture is in Genesis chapter 29. And it's when Jacob and Leah have their son. And Leah is so excited about this baby boy that she lifts her hands up and she begins to thank God for this son that that God had given her. She names uh, her son Judah. Judah means praise. You remember the first time in your life that you got past that self-conscious thing and you just lifted your hands to God, began to worship him? And in that, it was a powerful moment. It was the day that worship was birthed within you. Some of you in this room, you may have never experienced that before. I believe that today is your day of just getting past this self-conscious thing and begin to worship God and thank him for all he's done in his goodness. Amen? So yada, just to lift hands, thank him for his greatness. It's a thankful expression of worship. Number two, halal. We see halal, it occurs 140 times in scripture. It means this, to shine. To boast, to show, to rave, to celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. It's an act madly word. It's a go crazy for Jesus type of word. Anybody crazy for Jesus in here right now? Come on. Psalm 145, 2, it says this, every day, every day I will bless you, I will praise. So that word is, is yada, which we just read, your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised or halal. This is that Hebrew word. And his greatness is unsearchable. Listen, when you love something so much, you tend to go crazy for it, right? Some of you guys, you crazy over a touchdown that the Jaguars uh, score, and they don't even score that often, do they? They're, they're not very good. But you're going crazy because they actually scored a touchdown. It's a miracle, isn't it? Listen, if you go crazy over the Jaguars actually scoring, I mean, how much more should you go crazy over Jesus and what he's done for you? David, as they brought in the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, the Ark represented the presence of God. Man, David was so excited about the presence of God coming into Jerusalem, and he began to worship. He began to praise God. Why? Because he knew the blessing that came with the presence of God. You see, the ark was in someone else's home for three months before it came, came back home to Jerusalem. And there was blessing that went along with it. So David knew that, man, the presence of God is coming in. Man, I am so excited. And he began to dance. He began to praise God. He was wearing a robe and his robe fell off. And, man, I'm so glad we don't wear robes when we worship God because we don't, we don't want to see any of that, do we? But he began to worship God with everything he had. And his wife, Saul's daughter, began to look at him with disgust, began to criticize him for his extravagant worship to God. You know what happened to her? She became barren the rest of her life because she was critical over David's worship. You know, dancing before the Lord is something that you do because of who God is and what he's done for you. And sometimes we can look at people with a critical spirit because of the worship that is birthed within them because God took them from darkness into light. God took them from a place of depression into a place of praise, amen. And they're putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You have to be careful not to judge someone else's worship. 
I can sense there's a move of God in all over this place, man. We even, uh, this morning, there was a sense of freedom in worship. And listen, we want to keep that freedom. Do not get a critical spirit when you walk in here and you see someone begin to worship God. It changes your perspective, these meetings. 2 Samuel 22.4 is another place where we see this word. Uh, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised or halaled, so shall I be saved from my enemies. First Chronicles 16.25, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, greatly to be danced before, greatly to just go absolutely nuts for Jesus. He is also to be feared above all gods. Our next Hebrew word for praise is this word shabak. Say shabak. Shabak occurs 11 times in scripture. Shabak means to shout praises to God. Psalm 145.4, one generation shall praise or shout praises your works into another and shall declare your mighty acts. Its literal meaning is one generation is going to shout the mighty acts of God into the next generation. It's a release word. When you shout praise to God, it's a release word. It's not the same shout that occurred with the walls of Jericho. This is a shout of praise. And what happens when you shout praise to God, it's release word from the, from, from the very uh, breath of God that's within you. What is the breath of God? It's the ruah of God. And when you begin to shout praises to him, it changes the atmosphere because the breath of God is within it. And it changes the atmosphere of everyone that is hearing that shout of praise. We shout because he's good. We shout because he's worthy. We shout because he has done great things for us. Come on, give him praise right now. We praise you, God. Zamar is our next Hebrew word for praise. Zamar is used 45 times in Scripture. It means to play an instrument or to sing. Psalm 717, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. That we're praised there, Zamar. Psalm 98.4, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song. Rejoice in sing praises. You see, what songs and instruments do is they multiply our authority as a congregation. Through the tempo, through the cadence, through the melody, through the rhythm, through the notes that are being sung and played on instruments. It's allowing us as a congregation to sing the same thing at the same time, which is really just a prayer of declaration to God for who he is. Sometimes it can be just about the Lord. Sometimes it can be a prayer to God. But it's powerful because we in unison are singing the same thing and is multiplying our authority. Incredible. And when you think about it, the sound waves being released on an instrument, literally the Holy Spirit can flow through it. It's physical sound waves happening. That's why it's so important what you listen to. Are you listening to things that edify your soul or are you listening to things that are worldly, that are uh, dragging you down? It's important what we're listening to. Listen, uh, Saul, he had a spirit of heaviness about him. He was going through depression. And the only time he felt at peace was when David was playing his harp. Why? Because the anointing and the Holy Spirit flowing from that harp into Saul created a peace that surpassed all understanding in his life. But it was the only time he felt it. You see, instruments, our voices, are powerful. The next Hebrew word for praise is the word Tada. It occurs 32 times in Scripture. It's a confession of praise and thanksgiving. Now, this is a sacrificial thanksgiving, though. A sacrificial thanksgiving. It's a praise of surrender. Psalm 42 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. That word praise is tada, sacrificial thanksgiving. Psalm 50, 23, whoever offers praise uh, glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So what is tada? What is this sacrificial thanksgiving? 
It's just lifting your hands and saying, God, I surrender to you. Lord, I surrender my dreams. I surrender my wants. I surrender everything I have and everything I am just to you. Lord, you can have your way in my life. That's what you're doing. It's a, it's a universal sign of surrender. This is not a religious thing when we lift our hands to God. It's an outward expression from our heart that we're just wanting the, the presence of God in our life. We're wanting his will above our own. Isn't it funny, it's one of the great paradoxes of the Bible, that when you lose your life for Christ's sake, that you actually find life? When you give your life over to him and you worship him sacrificially, you actually find life in him. Our next Hebrew word for praise is this word tehillah, tehillah, not tequila, people, <laughs> tehillah. Tehillah means this, a spontaneous song of the spirit, a spontaneous song of the spirit. You know, throughout the Psalms, it talks about singing a new song to God, the spontaneous song of the spirit. Psalm 51.15 says this, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. That word praise there is Tehillah. Strangely enough, it's the only type of praise that God promises to inhabit. You've heard that before. God inhabits the praise of your people. Well, let's look at this. Look at what David writes here. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. In the night season, I am not, uh, and am not silent. Verse 3, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. One translation says, he inhabits the praises of Israel. He's saying, God, I feel a heaviness. I feel like, Lord, you've forsaken me. Lord, I feel like I'm going through just this difficult time and this difficult season. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But Lord, I know that you inhabit my praise. In other words, you inhabit that new song. So I believe that the Lord responds to all these different types of worship, but he only makes the promise to inhabit one type of worship, and that's the spontaneous song. Why? Because that song, that spontaneous rising from your heart is a song that's unrehearsed. It's a song that is raw and real. And that's the type of praise that God wants. He wants that authentic worship. So he inhabits that type of praise. See how these words bring on a whole different meaning for scriptures we heard before? You see, praise is a weapon. The spontaneous song from your heart, it's a weapon. Say it's a weapon. It's a weapon. The last Hebrew word for praise is this word barak. Barak occurs 331 times in scripture. It means to kneel or bow to bless God. First Chronicles 29, 20. Then David said to the whole assembly, praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and the king. That word praise there is Barak. To kneel, to bow, to bless God. The response you have to have in a presence of a king is to surrender everything. It's a, it's a heart expression before the Lord. To kneel and to bow. You know, we don't really have a context for this really here in the United States. We live in a, a, a democracy, mon not a monarchy. But some of you guys are really uh, into the royal family. Uh, yeah, like my wife. So you're kind of like into understanding what a king is. and all that. So a king, though, when you come before an earthly king, there's a protocol you have to have. The first thing you do is you prepare yourself to go before the king. It takes hours. You prepare a gift to come before this king. And then as you come into his throne room, what you must do is you must fix your eyes on the king. You can't waver to the left. You can't waver to the right. You fix your eyes on the king because if you don't, this is an earthly king, remember, you're dismissed from the throne room. And then once you come down before that king, you bow down in reverence before him. You're thanking him for all the giftings that come to be a part of that kingdom. You see, if we treat an earthly king like that, how much more should we treat the king of kings and the Lord of lords in our life? 
What if we came in here expectant every single Sunday to meet with the King, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Listen, there was an expectancy this weekend to meet with the King uh, at Freedom uh, this past Friday and Saturday. And I told them, listen, it's the same God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can experience that type of freedom all the time. You can experience that type of freedom all the time. We can come in here on a Sunday. It doesn't have to be a conference. It doesn't have to be a special thing. It is a special thing because we're coming together to meet with the King and the Lord of Lords, the King over everything. If we come with an expectancy, we prepare our hearts. What does that mean? Maybe you're laying out your clothes the night before and making sure that there's no, there's no fights in the, in the morning with your kids or whatever else. You're already ironing everything and you're already on Saturday night preparing your heart. And then when you come in here, you're not being distracted by anything else. You're just keeping your eyes and your attention of focused on God. Because why? We are a presence-driven church. We're not built around a person or a ministry, but we're built around what? We're built around the presence of God. So when we come in here, we know that we are meeting and we are gathering in his presence. And so we keep our eyes, our attention focused on the king. And the only appropriate response when God really falls is, man... You're on your face before him. You're on your face before God because he's so good. And there's a reverence and there's an awe and there's freedom in this house. And I believe that this has just begun. Behold, he's doing a new thing, church. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? Man, continue to have an expectation. So, Lord, we come this morning with an expectation for you. I'm going to shut your eyes right now over this room. We give these next few moments to you, Holy Spirit. We don't make room for you, Holy Spirit. You can take the room. Every part of it, Jesus. Every part of it. Would you just stand to your feet right now? Hebrews 12, 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Psalm 95, 6. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our maker. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's be in the worship God right now. Come on, let's be in the worship God. Come on, just tell him from the depth of your heart right now just how good he is. Come on, praise is a weapon. Say, praise is a weapon, church. Come on, declare it. Praise is a weapon. Lord, we are putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We are putting the garment of praise, oh God. Lord, we make a choice right now to lift you up, to praise your wonderful and holy and majestic name, Jesus. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. Begin to sing, man. Yes. Well, maybe you need to move out of your comfort zone right now. Let's just take a moment to worship. Just take a moment to worship. Just respond this morning. Come on. Yes. Yes, God. Here I am to say that. All together wander And here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together
Talk just to come all forward together. at the altar. Come on. Come on. Lord, we bow down before you, Jesus. We bow our hearts before you, oh God. Lord, in your presence is easy, Lord. In your presence is easy, God. It's easy in your presence, Lord. You're my God. You're all together. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So wonderful, you're so wonderful, you're so wonderful. Come on, the Lord inhabits the spontaneous song. I'm going to lift up your, your spontaneous song from your heart. It's whatever the Holy Spirit puts in your life right now. Come on, stir the atmosphere right now with your worship. You're so wonderful. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one beside you. You're so good. 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 Lord, all we want is you. Lord, all we want is you, Jesus. All we want is you, Lord. You can have your way. You can have your way. You can have your way. You can have your way, oh God. It's all yours. It's all yours, it's all yours, it's all yours, it's all yours, oh God. It's not anyone else, it's Jesus, but it's all yours. It's all yours. It's all yours. Nothing else will do. Come on, tell them. I just want Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Come on, tell them. I just want. Fix your eyes on him. Nothing else. Nothing else. Jesus. Nothing, nothing else, else to do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else to do. And I just Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want nothing else. Oh, nothing else, nothing else will do. Keep singing that. I just. 
Come over this room right now. Just lift your hands to heaven. It's not a religious thing. We're surrendering to the Lord right now. This is sacrificial praise. Oh, we surrender to you. We just want you, God. We just want you in every aspect of our lives, oh, Father. We surrender all we have to you, God. Just say, God, I surrender. Come on, declare it. God, I surrender. We surrender, Jesus. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Not our own will, God. Not our own ways, but your will, oh, Father. We just want you, God. We just want you, Jesus. We just want you, God. We just want you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, thank you that you inhabit the spontaneous song of your people. Lord, you are here. You are dwelling. Lord, this is your house. This is a place where you can inhabit, where you can dwell, oh God. We give it all to you and all for you, God. It is all for your glory and not anyone else's, Jesus. We put you at the center of attention, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to stay in the attitude of worship. Uh, this is your official dismissal if you need to go at all. But, man, you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to linger. You're welcome to worship. But we love you guys. Hey, remember... Uh, this is what we say around here. We want to seek his presence. We want to build his people. Don't forget this week to spend time with Jesus and to tell someone about the one that you love. Amen. Hey, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Continue to seek in the Lord if you feel led to.